G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today I just wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I really appreciate all the support throughout this year. It's been a big year for the channel. Drewsy and I have uh, put together a little podcast for you to enjoy on Christmas Day. That's kind of the point of this, to have something uh, to watch, you know, to different extent. Some of you may have busy days, but there may be some of you that don't. Um, so we kind of intended this as a little bit of a hangout. Um, I, I, if that's the way it came out, I'm not really sure. We kind of wanted it to be a bit more of a casual chat. We ended up just talking about the things that uh, are very natural to us at the moment. So we hope you find it interesting. One disclaimer, before we get into it, uh, we had a bit of a uh, glitch with the production of this particular video. Now, Druzy in the footage is very, very out of focus. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, Druzy wouldn't actually be so unprofessional as to forget to put his camera in focus before we started. I mean, the guy does this basically for a living and he would always be you know, conscientious enough to check it for a video going on my channel because I've always been such a good friend to him. So it's definitely not that. The truth is, Jeruzzi has been going to so many raves. That is just what he looks like now. He is that literally faded. Um, so you're just gonna have to embrace the fact that Jeruzzi just looks a little bit different to how he used to. And uh, we're very, very sorry for that in case it takes away from the viewing experience. But we feel like it was a good chat and we hope you enjoy it. So once again, very Merry Christmas. I appreciate you all and I hope you enjoy the podcast. Cheers. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone who watches True Footy. I am joined by Young Jersey of the Jersey YouTube channel. How are you, mate? Merry Christmas. Yeah, good. Merry Christmas to you as well, buddy. You've got a white Christmas this year. I do. Yeah, in more ways than one. Although it is actually not <laughs> snowing at the moment. Um, I don't even know what that means. It's uh, it's not snowing at the moment. It's just uh, pretty pretty windy and wild, to be honest. And I, I've, I know I'm kind of getting acclimatized to the UK now where it's eight degrees and I'm like, oh, finally, it's nice and warm. Yeah, she's hot over here, cousin. I've been, you know, back in Australia, back on the lawns, cutting grass, eating ass, as they say. Um, yeah, sweating like a pig. That's about it, really. Ready for Christmas on Monday when this will come out. But, That's uh, true. Yeah. Different climates, mate. Different climates. It, it really is. And I'm really glad we're getting into the deep content early in this podcast. Um, yeah. yeah, I I do not miss the heat of Perth, um, I have to say. This is my first cold Christmas. Although it is, like I said, it's not snowy. It's kind of miserable. But... Uh, that's okay. We'll adjust. We'll adjust. Um, what are you doing for Christmas, Jesse? Well, that is actually a great question because I, I turned to the audience for a few questions, not because I didn't prepare for this podcast at all. It has nothing <laughs> to do with that. Um, but I fired a few. Um, I, fired, I fired a story and I put it uh, on the community tab on the channel uh, asking people for questions for you. And we got a bit of a mixed bag. Some are um, like random questions, some are sport. There's a cricket one in there I can't wait to fire at you. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> but the first one is from Lee WC who asks, what are you doing? Doing for Christmas. So, to answer your question, um, we I am actually going to my roommate slash um, good friend, one of my best friends um, that I live with here. His family is putting me up for Christmas in the evening. Um, he, that poor bastard has to work Christmas Eve until two a.m. and then I think he works Boxing Day and New Year's Eve. He's been really stitched up, but we right. get a small window in the evening to go hang out. What about you, Drizzy? Yeah, just got a couple family friends coming around. Really, like I'll probably wake up. This is the least Christmassy I've ever felt. Like, I'll probably just wake up, do some work on my laptop, wait for the people to come around, have a nice lunch, have some crayfish for lunch, which is mm. the staple. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, just probably swim in my pool, have some white claws, and <laughs> have, a, have a good night. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Do you, do you like Christmas generally? Uh, I'm not massive on it, mm. personally. Like, I'm, not, I'm not a Grinch, but it's just like... I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of kerfuffle going on for for one day I don't know I really liked it last year I was over in England and like it was a different one I had it with family True. and stuff and we played board games and it was all jolly and different but um yeah, yeah I don't know maybe I should learn to be more grateful you know Christmas Day is it's a good time vibe's good but yeah I, I think know, it is like kind of a, it's a perspective thing as well because I'm the same as you I don't really care for it that much it was always, I always come as like resented the stress around it and my family would be like um, you know trying to get ready and stuff like that but at the end of the day like this is the day that you're meant to spend with your family who mm. you know we all we all love right so yeah. I don't know as I get older I'm starting to think I, I should at least pretend to care from now on um, <laughs> I haven't yeah. got any Christmas presents say hey? like I'm gonna go shopping Having tomorrow you? which is Christmas Eve oh my god <laughs> yeah I always do it hey? every time it's not even like a last week thing 
but yeah anyway christmas we love christmas yeah what other topics have we got jesse have we got any questions about the true footy channel which has been thriving uh you know what i don't think we actually do um uh, hang on um well why don't you just tell us about what you've been up to because we we have done three podcasts this year the first one was when you just got to england um we did that from my bedroom in perth and uh then you did one with me here in macclesfield and we yeah. talked about we were kind of in the midst of our travels or you were in the midst of yours rather and yeah. you were about to move to manchester um oh sorry you had just moved to manchester yeah, obviously with just the the clothes on your back <laughs> not not quite literally <laughs> and uh and then since then you have you stayed for in england for a little while and you've subsequently gone back so why don't you just walk us through what's happened since the last podcast we did which i think was like august yeah so that, i just moved up to manchester and i was like i was scared i was a uh, a little cat in a big city mm. <laughs> and I was yeah I was like he's homesick at that time um, and then yeah it basically just stopped being a little wimp grew up grew through it had a great time in Manchester um, I just worked in a bar for a few months and like I don't know I had no real structure or anything like it was great we are going out like we had a few nights out in Manchester I had a great time and stuff um, but like I wanted to work in my field which is like strength and conditioning and YouTube. Like a shepherd. AFL media. Yeah, exactly. Um, I like so that. I was like, That's funny. <laughs> the, um, the across the world connection, sort of the, the jokes don't land sometimes. You know, I'm sure it was funny. I'm sure if I was there, I'd be in stitches. Like a yes. stitch. But, um, <laughs> so like, yeah, I was living in Manchester and I was like, right, what's the next move? I sort of don't want to like, live here and work in a bar all through like a miserable winter and um yeah i've always sort of wanted to move to melbourne so i was like all right i'll have a bit more fun and then go back home over christmas and then hopefully move to melbourne in the new year uh so yeah did a bit more traveling went to madrid uh cardiff uh bristol london round amok and then yeah flew home via thailand did 10 days in thailand surprised my brother um, and then yeah got back and it was a massive massive come down like I've probably just had the best year of my life like mm. or at least like a top three year that I'll ever have like when I am on my deathbed I'll probably be thinking about the memories I made this year like just like the most incredible memories I could have like it was a 20 out of 10 time it was everything I wanted times so much more like it was so sick mm. um, but now I'm just yeah back in the not I would say the rat race but I'm just back in a not very rewarding groove like working the job which I had before just like mowing lawns um, go to the gym after mowing lawns and then work on my business at night that's sort of how it's going at the moment um, it's a bit of a lull save up some money and then send it to my next adventure which I hope is moving to Melbourne if not I'll go travelling again so that's the plan man really interesting so yeah. yeah it feels like you're kind of in like life purgatory between two like exciting times of your life um, yeah. So what, what is the timeline, do you think, if you were going to move to Melbourne, which it sounds like you're more than likely going to? Like, what's the timeline on that? Uh, hopefully end of February, so another, yeah. like, two months, which yeah. isn't isn't a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I've also just started working at a gym, like, training athletes specifically. Like, the only yeah. people that come into this gym are athletes, and I get sent around to different sporting clubs and schools and stuff like that, which is really cool. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, get to work in my field again, which is nice um so yeah get my money up over the next couple months and then yeah turn that dream of like i don't know living in melbourne and being in that scene with caden and all those guys over there right now it's like a a train that's about to leave and go on a magical adventure and i want to be a part of it which is why i've come back uh that was really the only thing that brought me back like i had no uh after i got through that period in manchester i really had no homesickness i was Mm. just having the best time of my life um but I was like, right, like I'm going to have to go home for a bit, just have a, a few boring months in comparison to what I'd had um, to, yeah, go to Melbourne after that. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it, it does. My follow-up question was going to get you to, to elaborate to the audience like exactly why you're moving to Melbourne. So it's to pursue mm. um, this, uh, like a career in the industry of, you know, footy content and uh, also working on your business. And you probably have more access to like, young athletes that sounded weird but you know what i mean like uh <laughs> yeah like where, where does it sit right now between like if you your ambitions between youtube and your business or so you sort of 50 50 on driving both this year 
I feel like this year has just been like a big learning year for my business. Like I started mm. it on January 1st. Mm. Uh, I had no idea how to run it or anything. So like next year, it's going to be more like finding the systems to put in place to make it work. Yeah. Um, and then I think just being in Melbourne, like being around creatives and stuff like that will really drive my YouTube channel. Um, for sure. Like I, can't e- I can't even say which one I'm leaning towards more. The business is obviously more profitable gets more like return on investment at this time but i think eventually like i want to blend them in sort of together that makes in sense. a similar way ish but like like a prime train for example makes a lot of content but like has his own brand sort of thing yeah like a a, a similar sort of uh like blueprint to that uh mm-hmm. just a different method i suppose yeah um, that- yeah i think they sort of go hand in hand somewhat yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it'd be silly to not capitalize on a audience that you have to drive your business as well. So uh, like those things absolutely should go hand in hand. Like my specialty in training athletes definitely comes from the demographic of my YouTube as well. It's like mm-hmm. that sort of later teen, those kids that are like trying to play high levels of footy and improve their strength and fitness that go on to play high levels, whether it's like AFL or high levels in the VFL or the talent league or whatever it is. Like those are the people that hit me up and want programs the most. And those are the kids that watch videos. It's like all those True. Uh, just like footy nuffs as well. So like when I left uni, I thought like I wanted to work in elite sport with like the tip top athletes and stuff like that. But that's like eight years of sacrifice, like grinding away at a university, which I don't know, I'm not a massive fan of the rat race in the institutions. That's a whole other thing. But um, I think, yeah, like sticking to my niche and like really dialing in on working with high level talent and helping them achieve their goals that's like yeah what i want to do and i I just love footy like i've always wanted to be a footy commentator we've already seen Caden like commentate at the mcg on a game and i think that's That's just the beginning of like things that could could happen like that whole circle with like Caden, bailey shepmates uh connor rogers uh like the marmalade boys and stuff like that like they're only just scratching the surface of what's going to happen in that industry Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for that. And I hope you're going to be a part of it too, buddy. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. Um, I, I kind of want to dig deep into like this business side of things as well because I, I'm aware that some people watching this may not have heard of you. And, and what I mean by that is obviously we yeah. actually haven't collaborated that much this year and obviously it's been a great year of growth for the channel. Um, but I think people might be like intrigued by this idea of a young man finishing his degree and starting a business and leveraging his audience. So without getting into like the real mechanics of it what what are some lessons and advice you think you could give to someone who wants to start their own business and is either scared or doesn't really know how to start like what are some of the key takeaways you've got out of this year oh god that's a that's a real big question which i wasn't ready for what are the key lessons i've taken away everything's trial and error okay like that that's what i'd say because like i really had no business now at all and i still really don't i'm still just like a yeah i still am learning so much every single day about business like for example yesterday i had three kids finish a program that they were on like they're a 12-week program and i had three people drop out so i lost like a massive chunk of my income Mm. and then like yesterday or like the day after that happened like i had a a big sale so it's like i don't know you take wins and losses and like learning so we were speaking the other night over text and you're like all of these things that go wrong will make you better in the future um But yeah, I think it's like taught me how to communicate and how to sell um, and just generally sort of run a business. Like the blueprint for most businesses is quite similar. Um, So yeah, I I think that would be a question for me to answer in a couple years time because I'm still just like really in the learning phase. Like I'm not even a master of what I'm doing yet. Mm. I'm still very much sort of figuring it out. So yeah, that's that's a hard one. I I suppose I didn't mean it from the perspective of like you imparting your mastery upon people but i think even just like what where you're at now at a critical juncture like you started this obviously with full of optimism of like what it could become and along the way in the first year i'm sure you've taken a few l's like you just alluded to um, yeah. and I, i'm very much a believer in and this goes for both business and life and just general psychology that like you can learn as much as you can theoretically but sometimes you really actually need to go out there and feel the l's for lessons to really be learned yeah. um has it how has it affected like your uh your optimism because you're a, an optimistic guy you always believe in the best outcome and i suppose from like an, a mental and emotional point of view how has that affected you much this year and have you gotten better at dealing with 
L's and wins and stuff like that? Yeah, like it definitely affects uh, not my optimism because I, I will always remain optimistic and like all yeah. the content that I absorb from like guys like that. Like, uh, Chris Williamson on Modern Wisdom, like Alex Hermosi, Iman Gadzi, like all of those guys, like they tell you that like you got to fail to succeed, sort of thing. Like you got to go through periods of failure and like I don't know, like uh, solitude and all this stuff where like it is a grind and it is hard to get to that point. Like mm. no one like tries for like a year, fails, gives up, and then ends up being successful. Like you've obviously yeah. just got to keep pushing through. Like um, yeah, imagine if a year or two ago when you were in Perth like when your channel wasn't like when you weren't uploading videos you were just like nah I'm gonna give up and now you've you've created the full time like well yeah you're doing it full time so mm. yeah like I, I remain optimistic for the future um, although in the in the trenches you get your shoes scuffed sometimes and you just gotta roll with the punches <laughs> <laughs> that's really true I, I think one again like I'm, I'm not really in the position you are I mean, in the sense that um, I, I just make videos like it's it's not really a business as such and therefore, like things like rejection, um, I don't really encounter that much. Sure, like I'll upload a stinker video sometimes, and people will be like, "Yeah, well, this is a fart compilation." Uh, but other than that, like I feel a little bit insulated from it. I, I feel though, like one of the biggest. Um, actually, this is a question from you, Cat. Maybe maybe we can uh, get onto that. It was a question about what was the biggest learning from this year. Um, go on, you go first. I've been speaking yeah, too much. I want to find the exact question. No, no, that's no, all right. You're the guest. Uh, <laughs> the main You're life the lesson. The main life lesson you've learned in the last 12 months. So that's a good question from a young UCAT. Go subscribe to UCAT. He's a great little fella. And works just as hard as anyone in this space, I reckon, to be fair. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Seriously. I, like, because just as an aside, he does like he does multiple channels. He might even have three. Mm. And I subscribe to his um, his football, like soccer one. And because of the time zones, he always streams like UK ones. And I just find myself in UK streams constantly, <laughs> just chatting shit. Um, like, great kid. Uh, okay, main life lesson for me. I'd, I'd say um, I'd say an intolerance to rejection is... I'll, I'll, <laughs> no, I'll finish the sentence. Um, I realized that an intolerance to rejection is probably the biggest obstacle I have to overcome to fulfill my potential. That was the way I'd articulate it. And that actually goes for my personal life and my business life. And I think so. it's so easy to insulate yourself from opportunities. For instance, okay, so like in your personal life, it might be, um, okay, it might be even applying for jobs or something like that. You, you, you yeah. don't want to fear the failure of getting rejected going for interviews. We get really scared by that. Uh, it could be about like approaching women. If you're scared of that rejection element, you, first of all, you will go for less people. And then second of all, you would just cop the L so much harder and it's yeah. the same thing in a business context like if I want to hit up a brand to, to work with me if I'm scared they're going to be like oh no that's stupid then I'm less likely to do that so it's one of those things and I, I hear this this trope from like successful people all the time the amount of rejection they go through like the, there's common threads between all these successful people who have made it in business and life it's just that they go they take a lot of L's before they actually succeed and that's something you don't necessarily see from the outside unless you dig a little deeper so for me, I'm like, that's something I'm working on this this year. Um, probably just uh, accepting rejection a lot better because then you will open yourself up to so many more opportunities. Is that something that resonates yeah. with you? Yeah, definitely. That's that's very well put. Like, you're not, yeah, you're not going to get those opportunities if like, you know, what do they say? It's not about if you get hit and you stay down, it's about how you get back up and whatever the bloody Rocky quote is. I'm sure Anthony would be able to recite that perfectly. <laughs> I didn't say that too well. Shout out to But like, yeah. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get up and go, son. Like, yeah, mm. don't take rejection as like your fate. Like, as long as you work hard on whatever you want to do and keep putting yourself in the places for those opportunities to take you places. Like, yeah, you gotta you gotta build up thick skin for sure. Um, my biggest learning sort of relates to that. Um, mm. I was gonna say I just don't care really what anyone thinks about mm. me anymore. Like, I, I don't care um, as long as I'm not hurting anybody or doing harm by anybody like i genuinely could not give a shit about what anyone thinks like i think posting youtube videos for so long you sort of lose that like oh that's cringe or whatever it is um and like yeah just taking risks this year like moving up to manchester i like, had no money i had nowhere to live and stuff like that and like you sort of come through the other side of that and you just i don't know it it gives you a lot of self-confidence sort of thing um also just like 
people care what other people think so much to the point that it affects how they spend their time and like what they want to do in life um for example like i don't know if you're surrounded by people that like hate on you for doing certain things like you're less likely to do that so like a girl i went to high school with used to make youtube videos got picked on a lot for it and then stopped making youtube videos and she like had like thousands of subscribers and stuff like that that's just a small example Mm. um but i don't know like i'm sure like kids can relate to that like i don't know you're not a good enough footy player or whatever it is um oh you shouldn't do that like that's a hard thing to do like yeah like just follow that optimism and oh yeah i've always had that i don't know that you have that, you have to be yeah. fair to you I, I that actually reminds me i was on a date a few months ago and i was talking to this girl and she said when she was like 13 so we're going back like five years no no she, she's going back like 10 10 plus years um she said that she actually had a youtube channel and uh she had like a thousand subscribers which for those who don't know 10 years ago on youtube that was a lot like yeah. some of the big dogs like I don't know specifics, but like KSI and the, these guys wouldn't have had much more than that. Um, yeah. But, and she was followed by Jack, mate. Like she was legit. Yeah. And she literally just said, she, <laughs> she got was to followed a- by Jack, mate, bro. <laughs> that is kind of legit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's networked enough in the scene to get recognition, yeah. Yeah, like a thousand subscribers back then, like, that would have put you in that kind of territory. Anyway, she just told me, like, she was like, and then I just got really self-conscious, you know, around that 13-year-old age or whatever it was, um, and I can relate to that, is when you really start really caring what people are saying. Um, And she just let it go. She's To be fair, like, she ended up being successful in other fields, but she just dropped it because of what people thought whereas uh, you've extrapolated that now if you had a thousand subscribers like over 10 years ago you would literally be well and truly making a living off this it all depends what you want but that's a classic case i was just like wow you just get dictated by what people say about you do you feel like right now in your time of life you are surrounded by anyone that um ah what's the word like do you feel judgment around at all or is that kind of like when you when you talk uh, about not caring what people think, are you thinking of anyone in particular, or are you just thinking about what goes on your social media and stuff like that? Yeah, no, just generally with socials. But like, I've got really good of cutting like shit people out of my life, like mm. straight out of high school. Like, I just realized that like people that I was hanging out with weren't for me. Mm. Um, and yeah, Chris Williamson was talking about this. But like, there's a time that like successful people. I'm not a successful person, but I'm trying to be they'll go through where they have to cut themselves off from like their past self go through a period of solitude uh and be someone different from who they were to get to that point where they can then hang out in a social circle of people they're like-minded with sort of thing yeah um where was i going with that um so like yeah i've got good at cutting people out and yeah surrounding myself with like-minded people there's Mm. a there's a quote i like it's like there's two types of people in this world only two there's uh energy and en- there's energy <laughs> gainers and energy drainers so like just think about like the people that you spend your time with are they like pushing you forward or holding you back i don't think there's really an in-between like yeah. people rather serve you or like yeah hold you back and yeah if you can identify what types of people around you are like energy drainers i'd cut them out and gainers mm. uh have them around but not really i wouldn't say anyone right now is really holding me back and like if someone does give me a shitty opinion like if i wouldn't take advice from them like i wouldn't wait what's the, what's the saying here like i wouldn't uh, take advice from someone who i don't strive to be sort of thing you know yeah I mean? and I, I i think another one is um i don't care it's, i'm paraphrasing i don't care that you boo for me because i've seen what you cheer for i think that's from rick yeah. and morty but i think chris williamson yeah yeah morty. It is. yeah yeah that's yeah. it's pretty deep I, the thing is well <laughs> i'll say as an aside here is like sometimes what people think of you is an illusion like you you kind of transpose what you expect them to think of you over them and then you carry that perception does that make sense yeah. like sometimes you think yeah. people are judging you and then you talk to them a little bit deeper like for instance the when i started true footy um i remember just assuming that everyone thought it was weird but the more time has gone on maybe to some extent as well that that i had a little bit of success with it i just realized that people either thought it was cool or they just did not give a shit and and that that's pretty much like one lesson i learned is like people care a lot less about what you're doing than you think because they're all wrapped up in their own shit but this might be a bit of a controversial point but like sometimes i think there's it's good to have a few haters and yeah like people who don't believe in you and this is another trait because i'm really into like psychology and also 
I, I watch a lot of successful people on YouTube and I try and get a little bit of a feel for them, you know, like the, you're the, some of the five people you hang out with and yet I'm, I live yeah. a pretty insular life right now. Um, and so <laughs> I, I, I just choose the content that I watch very selectively and I try and get things out of that. And one common thread between a lot of successful people is proving people wrong. And there's people in my life who are driven by that as well. And I maybe up until this point have never really felt that because I, I don't know, my friends and family have generally been supportive. And there's a part of me that thinks, I kind of wish I had a few people that thought I wasn't going to make it so that I would really try hard to prove them wrong. Do you think that's a controversial yeah. point? No, not at all. I think if you have haters, you're also reaching out to a, like a band of people that like i don't know they don't even know you so you're doing something right like mm. you know um what sort of changed for you with like going from oh people don't care about my videos or think it's cringe to now where you're at because like we <laughs> we've pretty much like switched personalities well yeah but i'm i'm doing good but like a, a couple of years ago like i was like really motivated making youtube videos all the time and you were sort of like i don't know not uploading just working a full-time job so what what is the difference in your outlook on your YouTube channel now compared to then? You know, you know what it is, Drew? Is I, I think I've just tapped into realizing what makes me tick. And I think during those periods of like feeling down for a few years, I probably bought into this too much of this notion of like, you need a balanced life and you need to have, and that is true. I'm not saying it's not true. Um, but you need to, you know, love yourself and, and find time for everything in life and, um, and I guess um, I'm probably not making a lot of sense here, but to, to make the point clearer, I realized that I am just somebody who thrives on being obsessive and having a goal. And I realized that that's what I need. I need a carrot. And I was also learning a lot about, um, I actually can't remember exactly who I got this from, but how men and women are, are wired differently. And I think sometimes that the, chat, the chats about like mental health and stuff like that, they need to have different conversations for men and women because we just think differently. Yeah, And one of the common threads I learned was like, men tend to need to have a purpose in life. And for me, I genuinely did not have a purpose. I was trying to balance my life perfectly. This is not advice. I'm just saying this is what worked for me. And then when I tell you where the, the thing switched for me is because probably now that I'm full time and rely on it financially, now it's like a real challenge and a real struggle. And there's, a, there's the element of stress that drives me. I think the one thing that's worked so well for me uh, in this space is adding in a layer of stress to my life that isn't paralyzing. Like I'm not actually scared of not being able to eat, although kind of, um, <laughs> but it's, it, it's enough to make me realize like, okay, if I don't work really hard right now and try and drive this to where it, where it can be, then I am going to genuinely be in financial struggle, like really yeah. bad. And I think that mental shift has brought out this competitive drive in me that has laid dormant for a little while. Um, and so I just need, I need a carrot, man. So like yeah. from 2022, like 2021 ends, we had a great year. Yeah. 2022, I got a, you know, a promotion at Bunnings. I was on good money. Suddenly the drive to, to amongst other things that were happening in my personal life, the, the drive to like drive YouTube to its full potential just died. And I just literally felt there was no point. Yeah. And now at the very least, it's less about necessarily thinking that I need to drive it to its full potential because it's an amazing thing. It's, it's as much as like, I need to make this work because I will struggle. And I think that has just put me in a different mindset and now everything else has clicked into place. I'm working hard because I need to eat, but now I believe in it again. Yeah. Um, so I hope that wasn't too much of a rambling, nonsensical answer to your question. No, again, it's not advice. I'm not talking, I don't mean to talk to everyone in there saying, you need to just like get rid of all the balance in your life and put yourself <laughs> in stress. But I just genuinely think having that carrot um, and and the, the need to make this successful. It's literally the changing it from a want to a need just tapped into something else and now I'm I'm uh, th thriving. <laughs> just a simple mindset shift. Yeah. That's mental. Like, um, yeah, because I felt like that when I first got back from Perth. I was like, when I was away traveling, I had a social life and I was doing this and I was doing that and I was happy and now I don't have that. And now I'm sad. But yeah. like, yeah, after speaking to you, I should just be like, nah, just like, get your head down and just like get some bread that's that's literally mm. what you said yeah and like yeah, literally, yeah. literally in the last couple of days like 
Hey guys, just want to briefly interrupt this video to talk to you about a message from our sponsor, Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, a lot of you probably know Druzy through collaborations on this channel and me appearing on his channel, but not all of you may be aware that Druzy is actually a fully qualified strength and conditioning coach. So if you're a young male or female athlete wanting to take your footy game to the next level with preseason just around the corner, you guys should be aware that Druzy does have a preseason SNC bundle available. Where Druzy, as a fully qualified SNC coach, like I said, can help transform your game in 12 weeks. An AFL-specific gym program and an AFL-specific running program. And throughout, you'll receive personalized coaching, which can include advice as well around nutrition and recovery. So if you're someone who wants to take a more dedicated and I guess professional approach to your footy, Druzy's offering his pre-season AFL bundle at $39.99 a week for that 12-week program. But be aware that if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout, you get 20% off. So like I said, if you're serious about your footy, it's time to invest in yourself and don't forget to use the discount for 20% off. Trying to make as much money as I can. And that like competitive mm. thing or like, right, I want to have this much money by this point. Mm. like obviously there's days where you're not like as uh i don't know as motivated or whatever but yeah that mm -hmm. hunger inside of you I, I can now resonate with that like yeah don't deep your day-to-day -day, uh as much as long as you're like striving for something better i think that yeah. like keeps you sort of motivated and if your motivation's higher generally your like general life satisfaction is high as well mm. um yeah absolutely i think segmenting your life it was also really important. So you and I both have spent times this year just living La Vida Loca and just having a good <laughs> yeah, time. Boy. And then in a similar way, like I'm still out here. And yet when I got back from Greece in September, that has when like, obviously I, I haven't traveled since. And then I've just clicked into this like monk mode, obviously. But there's also the important part that like I am working all day, every day. I'm sick right now. It's also Christmas. I'm going to be working on Christmas day and I don't care. I'm happy to do it. But yeah. I also don't think, I think if deep down I felt like this was the rest of my life, I'd probably crash. Like I'd be like, oh, oh yeah. And yet I, now, now I'm doing this for a specific purpose. I've, I've narrowed my focus. I'm like, okay, December, January, get through winter. If, I've, if I survive off YouTube through winter, that's an amazing achievement. Build up some savings and then I'm going to travel again next year. And the same thing with you. you you've got this little period now where you're in a bit of a lull, but you know that next year it's going to be different and there's things to look forward to. And you might be doing more work this year 2024 rather than you did you know in England because things will be different but you'll be you'll be happy to do it because you know there's a change so I think having something at the light at the end of the tunnel is also really important and probably something I lacked in 2022 where it was just like the same thing over and over again why exactly am I doing this if that makes yeah. sense yeah no I, so I, now I feel you got caught up in the rat race a little bit like good job like you probably get uh, did you feel like you get into that age where you're like oh I could probably just like chill out now like I've had my early yeah. 20s did you feel that yeah, I mean, to some extent, I don't know if I felt like I needed to chill. It was much just like, why work so hard? I'm already on good money, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. And that, that leads me, I was actually watching a bit of Mark Manson. I've been watching Mark Manson the last few days. Um, and I'm trying to remember exactly what he said, but uh, he talks about how this generation um, increasingly, like where there's a lot more mental health issues and a lot more people, uh, the, in a nutshell, we're a lot more tapped into how we're feeling than we used to be because that's a privilege because there's so much um, prosperity now you know mm -hmm. like you think about during the war periods it was either just like I need to just work to make make yeah. life work or I need to just if I'm in the war I just need to not die like that was that was what everyone was thinking about yeah, to put it yeah. really to oversimplify it and nowadays we're at such a, a point where we've earned this privilege of being like so how do I maximize my potential? Do you think people were thinking that like 80 years no, ago? Not at <laughs> do you all. you know what I mean? And so yeah. that's, that's kind of the, the mindset I've tapped myself into now. It's just like, no, I need to work hard to, to, for my life to function. And I think lowering my eyes a little bit, making life a bit harder, having a bit more stress has actually just removed all of that like white noise that I was just, you know, constantly being like, how do I feel? Am I happy today? Am I mentally yeah. healthy? And stuff like that. <laughs> That's such an know, interesting I'd... point. Yeah. Yeah. Like we we yeah. are so privileged. Like we've got to the point as humans where we like most or a lot of us have so much of the stuff that we want. Like I've had a very privileged upbringing where my parents have worked very hard and like given me like Christmas time. I'd get every present I wanted to. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and like, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting way of putting it. It's like when you've got all the material items you want and you're still not happy, it's like, shit, what's going to make me happy? Maybe I need a girlfriend maybe that'll make me happy or whatever it yeah. is 
but it's like <laughs> yeah like i don't know it's just like yeah back in world war Two, like once the nuke was dropped on japan everyone was buzzing bro everyone was like let's go war's <laughs> over like <laughs> that's actually fact i just watched uh world war Two in color on the front lines or something 10 yeah. out of 10 watch watch that on mm. netflix um, and you see li- these like American sailors going back into New York. Like none of them are thinking like, "Am I living a fulfilling life?" They're like, "Bro, the war's done. Everything's sweet. Let's go." <laughs> um, <laughs> weird segue. Really weird segue. No, I think um, it's related. It was related. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <laughs> once the Japanese got nuked, from everyone was stoked. That sounds so <laughs> bad. But um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like simpler times like simpler times like this is a really like this is a very touchy subject because depression's a real thing and mental health yeah. is a real thing but my poppy like classic aussie bloke like from the country always like just worked on sheep stations and played footy and cricket just like you're a true blue aussie bloke and he's like i don't really get depression although i was depressed once in my life I was working on a sheep station. It was a 45 degree day. And we had these two VB long necks sat in the fridge waiting for us, me and this bloke. And we were just thinking about these two long necks all day. We were that thirsty. Put in the hardest day of yakka ever. We get back to the fridge and the two King Browns are gone. (laughs) And that was the one day in my life I was depressed. (laughs) So yeah, different different types of different types of depression throughout yeah. throughout the ages yeah it's um, true man like I, I don't i didn't know my pop like super well like he was already an old man before i was like fully conscious um but i just can't imagine like he was just such a happy simple lovely guy um not yeah. simple like intelligence wise just like just got joy out of the simple things in life and i think yeah. that that just demonstrates how different that generation was and he literally he served as well so you know him just having a family around with grandkids around like that's that was him that was him self-actualized if that makes sense and now and it kind of feeds back into the social media thing i i've always i think up until recently i always thought the social media having an influence on our mental health was a little bit shallow and i never really never really resonated with me in the sense that i certainly never felt like it affected me but i think one thing it did affect me and on a completely subconscious level i don't think I, I ever looked at somebody's instagram and going wow i feel bad about my life because they're having a great time but then i think subconsciously i think i built this belief that my life was inferior to all these other people because we're seeing obviously the best aspects of their life um obviously that's a really shallow way of looking at it but i think it just sort of got me without me even consciously realizing it is that something you can relate to do you spend much time like looking at instagram or anything like that I don't really get jealous of people on Instagram. Like, nah. Mm. Like, nah. Well, that's, I what, that's I, what I mean. So, I mean, on a conscious level, I didn't either. And then I think subconsciously, I, I, had, I, had, I found I had this belief that everyone was enjoying their life and I wasn't. And I was like, me, why, why do I believe that? For me, it's like, um, and we were speaking about this the other day over text, like, I feel like I'm constantly chasing something. Like, I'm not mm. our granddads who, like, are just mm. happy with the simple things. Like, I've always felt like i'm chasing something and like aside from traveling where i was just living la vida loca living my best life like i was genuinely just happy because i was just having so much fun i didn't have a care in the world but um yeah i don't know i feel like you get in this like grind set like monk mode like on the at the end of the tunnel like once i get to 50k subscribers then i'll be happy you know what i mean like yeah you you I don't know you in your mind you think like i'll get to this position where my life will be in a better place and then i'll be happy and in some aspects it will like money definitely does contribute to you just generally being a, having a better life for sure but like the the social media side of it like uh yeah it's a weird one because i would really love to detach from social media completely but it's like a part of what we do at the same time yeah. like you sort of gotta you gotta play the game I think like even if you don't want to like in this field you definitely just gotta like not even not sell your soul but I don't know do you do you get what I'm getting at like can you phrase this in a better way for me yeah 100% like yeah you're saying that you you don't actually enjoy the the um the game of social media like there's people I know who are just individuals that post 10 to 15 stories a day and I'm just like I have uh, not a business, but I don't call it a business, but obviously a platform, whatever you want to call it. 
I should be doing that and yet I really don't want to and that yeah. I kind of see it like I wouldn't call it selling your soul I just think the reality is anyone who runs a business there's elements of it that they don't enjoy and maybe for you and me that's you know driving social media and putting ourselves out there constantly but I think that is just I mean it's no different to you know maybe in the 80s where it was all face to face selling you know what I mean like nobody enjoys that like I'm glad yeah. I don't have to do that just posting a story by comparison is easy <laughs> you know what I mean yeah I just feel like this next like if I do move to Melbourne this next two years will give me the answer like was going all in on social media or my business as well but the social media side like was it worth it was it all that it cracked up to be like I don't know I got to like 20k subscribers and I'm like you know rubbing shoulders with like the people in the AFL scene and stuff like that like is that what I want will that make me happy maybe it will Maybe I'm in an environment where I feel inspired and I meet really cool people and my social circle is really cool and I'm fit and healthy and all that. Maybe mm. I am happy. But like, yeah, the the desire for success on YouTube, it's a weird one. Like, yeah, it's not just like, I don't even know what I'm chasing with it really. I think I just do it because I enjoy like the the lifestyle that I'm sort of trying to manifest. Like, being a strength and conditioning coach and working in football media like my monday to friday i feel or monday to sunday really because football's a weekend thing but yeah i feel like i would really enjoy that lifestyle Mm. but like do what i can just be happy by focusing on the simple things i don't know i can just be happy from getting this bread as we're talking about before i don't know i'm a young man jesse i'm just shooting nah, shooting shots I have, here I have an yeah. answer I have an answer I that point of feeling self-actualized like you've hit a certain point and you're like no I've made it that's never going to come yeah that's what I that's what I think I've learned it's never going to come what you need to really appreciate is the what you're doing on a daily basis and if you enjoy it but I honestly think like for me it's it's the it's the draw it's the um the grind itself that you need to enjoy and I actually really enjoy my life right now and mm. I don't want this to be the rest of my life, but I enjoy working really hard, seeing the numbers go up because that's what I'm driven by. And uh, I'm happy with that. And I know that when I hit a certain point, because I know this every time I've hit a milestone, it's it's just like, okay, next one. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's just going to be the endless cycle of life. I suppose the the thing is, man, if, like, if you just... Are you struck me as a sort of guy who if you just got a nine to five and just live the same day over and over again and try to enjoy... Um, like the flowers you know what i mean yeah like i don't i think you'd find that really unfulfilling and i think Mm. i think everyone's different you need to tap into what motivates you but i know that i'm happy when i've got a carrot and i think there's no point where i'm going to catch the carrot and if i ever feel like i've caught the carrot then i think that i would find that really difficult so i think the answer is that that's never going to come you just need to pick a lane where you are stimulated enough and challenged enough to enjoy chasing that carrot but you have to accept that that carrot's actually never going to arrive and that that is actually the beauty of it. Yeah, I, I agree to an extent, but I feel like you can get to a point like like you're never going to not have challenges in your life. Like that is a mm-hmm. given. Ange Postacoglu said that like Richarlison was in bad form or whatever. And he's like, these footballers, they have all this money, all this fame, and they think that like challenges aren't going to come to them in this life. But I've never remembered a time in my life where I didn't have to face challenges. And then Richarlison goes and like bags the winner. Love Big Ange. Um, but like, I speak to like my family members who, like my cousin Lee in particular, like he's got two kids, a wife and a business that's doing really well. And like when he was, when I saw him for the last time, I was like, are you there? Like, what we're talking about now self actualize he's like yeah like I'm genuinely happy I've got my kids I've got my purpose I've got my business that I work hard on and he's found like a mix where he's like right now I am so happy with how everything's going that's which good. is um yeah that's that'd be a really cool place to be mm. um but yeah I I've always felt yeah my whole life I've been chasing something I just don't know what it's a weird yeah. one but I had you it have- this year when I was traveling it was sick I was, I was like sweet Happy as Larry. Mm. Yeah, I, but I think the beauty of that traveling is that you had to work for it and that it's it's uh, on a time limit. You know, if that was just your life, you would get bored of it very quickly. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good it is. Like, if you if you won the lottery and you, you could go out and you could go live in Manchester again and not have to worry about the rand, you probably 
don't even need to get a job. You can just hang out with your friends all the time. You would get fucking bored of that real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. That That's that's a great story about your cousin. Um, I, I guess maybe like he's still stimulated enough by the fact that raising kids is hard. Having a marriage yeah. is hard. Did you say he runs his own business? That would have its own challenges as well. Yeah. So maybe he's just stimulated enough. Do you know what I mean? That's like true. I said, I, I don't necessarily want to be working as hard as I do right now for the rest of my life. I want to have what that guy has. Um, yeah. But this yeah, is something the that other important thing. I'll go on. on. Okay. Uh, Mark Manson, you were talking about before. He wrote a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Do I have it here somewhere? Yeah. I, I will have it here somewhere. But anyway, one of the main themes of the book is like, whatever you do is going to have challenges and it's going to have sucky parts about it. So mm. like, you got to choose what you can like put up with and enjoy at the same time so yeah. like yeah choose it doesn't matter yeah exactly like choose your suck like for me on youtube it's like sometimes you'll post or for you on youtube it's like sometimes you'll post a video that won't get views and that's like the the knock on the chin that you'll have to take and like mm. if that's the worst thing that you have to deal with like you're fine with that because like when you get wins like you love it like when you get videos that bang and you can just make content that's cool um whereas like I don't know if you're working something like a job that you don't enjoy and like the whole thing sucks like you should probably get out of that like ev- but people I think that book taught me like there's no industry or anything where you're going to be where there's not going to be an element of things that are going to pop up problems that are going to uh, happen 100% I uh yeah. that's just a basic psychological truth like a universal truth as well uh i i was reading a book once and i took a photo of it because it resonated with me so hard it, and it was just this, like i don't have a source as such but it, it said something along the lines of your brain like it is not possible to have zero problems in life like you you, you picture the, the most like idyllic life and all the circumstances going your way and how the brain works is it will create problems and that's where you'll get depressed at it. Like successful people who appear to be self-actualized still get depressed because their brain just conjures new problems. So yeah. you just should choose what your problems are. And for me, like I enjoy the problem of needing to afford to buy the bread from Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big ups Tesco's, miss Tesco's. Yeah. I'm actually more of an Aldi man. It's a little cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Oh man, when I moved to Manchester, as I said, I had like no money. Like, I had a thousand pound. Mm. Uh, five five hundred and fifty of that went on rent. Uh, mm. I was paying for a hostel, blah blah blah, whatever. And like, I got in. I had like probably like eighty pound to my name. And I went to Aldi and spent like sixty pound on like the saddest food ever. Hey, it was mm. like pasta cheap loaf of bread bro that was fucking crazy crazy time to be alive i made it out alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah true man i'm i'm eating and living like a uni student again um like I, i'm getting my proteins i'm getting my macros i mean i'm buying enough meat it's not just like like cheap carbs but like yeah i i've really dropped the quality of food that i can buy but i i just i've just adjusted and i and i'm grateful like my mate and you you experience this as well like he he works in a pub and uh as did you or a bar and i he comes home exhausted and i'm just like i'm glad that i slaved away all day but i just talked about football <laughs> you know yeah I mean? the yeah. reward is yeah. kind of similar and yet i'm fine and i'll get up and do the exact same thing tomorrow so i'm also very the- grateful with the position i'm in it's like yeah. six years to get to a point where in like september of this year was the first time i made enough money to live off <laughs> yeah it's pretty yeah. crazy pretty well crazy. that's so, the thing with this industry is the time you spend like you get return on investment in time like it gathers interest mm. whereas where i was working before and like what will's doing at the moment it's like you just clock in and clock off and like that time that you spend it's just like blacked out like yeah you yeah. can become a better bartender maybe and work your way up to be a cocktail Waitress. whatever yeah like whatever like you work your way up in that industry but i think that is the most uh fulfilling part of this pursuit that i'm on is like the time i spend even if i fail or like have successes like it all is leading to something that's going to be greater Mm. and it's something that you've built as well yeah it's a lot more fulfilling yeah yeah and everyone's different like uh there's people out there who just want to have enough for their family and that's that's beautiful that's sweet like yeah yeah that's like that real world war ii mentality <laughs> <laughs> nagasaki's been bombed let's go to metros 
<laughs> oh, he's got Nagasaki brain. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I'm that so stoked. Actually. I'm so stoked for people who are happy doing what they're doing. Like, yeah. they, like you said, like, people just tick differently. Mm. Like, people, some people are really happy just, like, I don't know, being a, a print, oh, not an apprentice, but like, what, like a tradesman, like, working on the mines and stuff. Personally, I'd hate that. But they're doing what they're doing. They, like, know how they tick. They get money. They get time off, whatever it is. Like, they find a balance. It's just people that uh, get caught in, like, a shit spot and don't get out of it. They're the ones that, like, I'm like, come on, bro. Do something with your life. But people that are happy, good on you. Yeah, I'm happy for 100%. you. 100%. It's all expe- expectation versus reality. If you have innate expectations, then the threshold of what you need to do is so much higher. <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. Which what, is what probably is why... Like- I'll go on. Uh, you were going to make a point I was going to kind of change the subject you go um, maybe that's why I struggle with it a lot because my expectation is that I'm going to be like a top dog strength and conditioning coach with like mm. a business that's paying me to do what I enjoy whilst getting like YouTube fame and like meeting people that are cool like that's the expectation yeah. the reality is like I'm sat at a desk on my laptop trying to make it make this dream yeah. a reality so yeah. maybe that's that's probably like a yeah big reason why I struggle with it but like, True. yeah, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta be in the trenches. You gotta get those boots scuffed. <laughs> <laughs> what actually that is uh, related to my segue. But I was gonna say, what what do you think it is about you specifically that wants so much more? You just said you your parents worked hard. You you came from a pretty privileged background, as did I. But what what is it that you, about you and your brothers the same as you that wants more? What do you think? What what have led to that? I want to live a fun life. Like mm. that's probably like the primary factor. Mm. This is like a really deep one, but like, a, and this is another uh, trait of successful people, but I've never really felt like I'm enough. Like I've never felt like yeah. I am uh, deserving to be in like situations that I'm in sort mm-hmm. of thing. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that, Imposter that syndrome. yeah, like, I don't know. I just feel like I've, I have something to prove almost and I don't know yeah. where that comes from that's some like probably deep psychological shit from my childhood don't know well, you didn't have like, the best time in high school from what, you t- what you've what you told me yeah yeah that's true it could come yeah. from that and, and yeah, to be honest I, I, yeah. Did I. I mean junior high for me was very like it was very impressionable and I, I went to a kind of a rough school and it was kind of like I was loved and adored by some dog. and equally like I, like, I was a liked enough kid I wasn't on the fringes or anything like that at the same time my school was one of those things where everyone got bullied at some point <laughs> you know what I mean and, and socially isolated at various points so I don't know but I do think that's kind of a superpower at the same time yeah you can use it to your advantage that's probably a good point that's probably where it is like it does come from like I never had yeah. like popularity in high school or whatever like in the social hierarchy of high school I was <laughs> bottom mm. tier um and that's so, yeah, why now, you, you've made yeah. this point before about how those who thrive in high school don't really amount to... Uh, generalizing, obviously, but like um, you, you said that sometimes the cool kids in school, and I'm sure everyone can relate to this at some point, don't always amount to be anywhere by the time they're 30. Yeah. Maybe because they had that fulfillment and they were actualized in high, sc- high school and there's nothing making them strive for more. I don't know. Well, that's how they become wired. It's like, oh yeah, I'm a cool kid in high school. Like I do yeah. all this. Like I don't know. Life's like, gonna be easy. I, yeah, like I've got it. Like I'm socially accepted by everyone, and then everyone yeah. grows up and matures, and they're like, hang on, that method isn't working anymore. It takes a big mindset uh, shift. Yeah, that's um, true. But yeah, like I don't know. I feel like high school cool kids. A lot of them have big egos, and they're probably too cool to change their ways. I don't know. That's a whole other mm. turkey. It's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, Drew, so we're at the part of the pod where I'll probably rattle through some quick fire questions that um, the people quick kindly... quick fire steamroll. You have 30 questions to answer as many questions about AFL round 13 as you can. Jesse, are you ready? There are so many people oh. who won't get that reference that it's just going to fall on deaf ears. Um, <laughs> Drew Footy Show, season two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, good show. Um, I'm, am I really that irrelevant now? Fuck me. <laughs> Well, no, it's just that, like... I'm not actualized. <laughs> I think that's the nature of YouTube, man. Like, yeah. when... I think my channel... Uh, this sounds like a wanky flex, but I honestly think my channel's almost doubled since the time we did that. 
So the people watching me now yeah. are different to the people that watched me back then. The people who watched me back then have probably lost interest in talking Can about you comment else. on this video if you don't know me but know Jesse? Like, <laughs> I actually want to see you comment. Like, don't don't be a dick. Like, if you actually know me and you're just like, oh, I'm going to comment, I don't know. Like, I'm watching if you, you don't know me, I, I actually want to know. I'm in the banner of this YouTube channel, bro. Come on. That's true. You really are. See you my face there. The, you've only been on the channel three times this year. Get me back on. 2024, baby. The year of content. Yeah. Cool. All right. We've got a, a first question. I want to shout out Brooklyn. Brooklyn is the first member of the True Footy YouTube channel. So thank you so much for the support. If anyone wants to become a member, uh, there is the join button below and you get certain perks like early access to videos, etc. And Brooklyn, shout out. Absolute queen. Big ups, Brooklyn. Uh, she city. asks, yeah, your favorite tastes in music. Keep it short. Drum and bass. Slave to the rave to the grave, baby. Come yeah. up. Yeah, uh, yeah. And for me, um, I, I'm kind of into. I, I like a bit of indie rock, uh, uh, funk. I like house music. That's my dance music. Nineties R and B. Like you, you segment the, your interests, and like if I'm at the gym or well, I like how I said keep it short, and I'm rambling. Um, yeah. But like if I'm at the gym, I listen to house music, uh, funk, R and B, and then sometimes I chill out to like Tame Impala and stuff like that. So pretty eclectic but uh, you won't ever find me at a drum and bass tent <laughs> I, I have seen the world's best drum and bass this year that's one thing I have done like that, yeah that's side sick, note but, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a few footy questions and I feel like I don't have enough time to do it justice uh, oh come on I'll, just I'll, do this it. is a bit of a layup uh, Diamond Games on YouTube says what chance do you think West Coast have of making the 8 I'll let you take this one skip <laughs> next <laughs> <laughs> Um, very slim, very slim. Um, okay, the next question is from Creeper Man. So, <laughs> great name. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how North will perform in 2024. I know you've spoken about them already, but I'd love a more in-depth look at it. Okay, so we don't have time for an in-depth look at North, um, but what are your what are your thoughts on North Melbourne Drews? They played some real good footy early this year, and then yeah, I stopped giving a Perth. shit about the league, and I think that shut up and then I think like they just went to shit like Clarkson didn't really get a full year in Diddy um, yeah, that's another thing true. I need to get back into like analysing the league 2021 I was all over it last tell you what year you should watch. I've just done team based videos for 2024 I've literally done a deep dive on every single team in the league um, I will so watch that you specifically should watch that it's on, it's on a playlist um, yeah I will and then you can just regurgitate my thoughts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll 100% do that <laughs> it is actually a pretty concise way that, like if somebody else did that I would watch them to get better at what I do um, you're great next question is Ben Dover Sports great name if a zombie apocalypse occurred this instant and you just heard and saw the rumblings on TV in the early stages it's not entirely safe not sure how it's transmitted what do you do to best prepare yourself ah uh, far out make sure I'm vaccinated actually i think that was one of the yeah questions. i was gonna say that bro but i was like nah I better somebody not. somebody did comment on my, my computer's being slow so i'm just trying to scroll down to it uh to fly 308 says you line up for the first available vaccine <laughs> yeah nah no comment on on that one no, uh um, what are doing a zombie layout. zombie apocalypse what am i doing to best prepare oh, i don't know bro you know we don't I'd have do? guns in Australia. I don't know what you do. I'd bunk down at Bunnings. Be... Yeah? Everything I need. You know there was a... Um, well, there's weaponry <laughs> for a start. Grab a chainsaw, grab a couple of four amp hour batteries. Um, <laughs> there was a, this was homeless guy, I shit you not, who, not at my store, but somewhere in Perth, had set up a mattress. I don't know how the fuck that happened. Or maybe not a mattress, but something, some makeshift mattress. He set it up in between yeah. the racking and he slept there overnight, every night. Smart. I rate that. The, the, I'm actually really impressed at how he managed to pull that off. So um, am I. There used, to, there used to be a niche on YouTube where people would like staying overnight at Old Trafford and watching the game the next day and they just like sit in a toilet for like 16 hours and wait for like people. Like I remember watching that, like that sneaking into like a trampoline park and they'll like hide under a trampoline and then everyone goes and then they like go. So like, yeah, hiding in Bunnings 24 hour challenge. Maybe that's yeah. something that can get my uh, channel back up and running. It, it's Zombie definitely- apocalypse, I'm dead. I don't have a key anymore, otherwise I'd help you out. Um, but it's heavily armed as well, so if you move, you get to set off the alarms. I'm a bit heavily armed. Oh, I was Boom. actually thinking that. I took a sip of coffee and I was going to make that joke. God damn it. 
<laughs> Boom. <laughs> that's good. Um, Lee just has one that's probably more based on me, but you can answer it too. He says, how do you like England and why did you choose the town you live in and not London? There's so much more to do in London and when are you coming back to Perth? So for me, I'll say I love England despite it being miserable weather, um, but I, I do love the town that I'm in. I live in Macclesfield and I chose it because I have a best mate here. I chose it over London because I was going to live off YouTube for a while and I couldn't afford to rent in London. And then I got to the point where I was just like, I, I'm, I'm happy here, so I'm going to stay. But I go down to London all the time. I spent the weekend in London. Uh, how did you like England, Jersey? I loved England. Uh, the best part English. I found it. I am half English. Uh... I really enjoyed the social scene there. Just like people, you go to the pub, it's more like you mingle with more people, you speak with more people. In Perth, find it a little bit more clicky. Like you sort of go out with your group of mates and sit with your group of mates and everyone sort of does that. Um, so I really enjoyed the social scene of England and the rave scene. Slave mm. to the rave to the grave. Yeah. Um, anyway, unrelated. Uh, why did I not live in London? It's so expensive. A uh, bit of a... It's a little bit of a rat race. Like, I don't mean that, like, London's a bad place, but, like, everyone there is, like, on a high-paying job. Like, you go on the tube, everyone's just, like, I don't know. Everyone's in their, in their zone. I lived in Manchester and in the south, like, in the countryside. But Manchester was just so sick. Like, I don't know, you can have a good night out any night of the week. It's so densely, like, I don't know, it has everything in one spot. London's, like, quite spaced out. Anyway, I think that sort of answers that question. Next. I do love London, I will say that, because I, I have a good friend that lives in Brixton, which is a very cool cultural little place. It almost feels like a little sub-city. Um, very, very diverse, very overstimulating, um, and I, I love it. And it, I do love the variety of people that you see in London. Like, I, I go down there a fair bit, and I, I like just being, like, at a train station and looking around and seeing, like, you see a young professional um like corporate type you'll see like someone that looks like they probably don't have a house um yeah. you'll see you'll see like a, a vietnamese immigrant family like trudging along over there and then you'll see like i don't know like all every Buskers, single different type whatever. of person yeah. that you can think of you'll see in london and i love looking at them being like how do we all end up in the same room right now like that is the yeah. cool part about london it's 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 so weird. I love meeting people who live there and just trying to get a feel for their stories. But you're right. It does breed a certain different type of people. It's very... It's, it's probably it's how they describe... Based. Yeah, it's, it's like how they describe New York. Like, people move there to try yeah. and make something of themselves. They've got something to prove. It doesn't always manifest in the best way. But I, I don't know. I, I love meeting different people from there. But I, they are yeah. a little bit snobbier in the sense that, like, in Manchester, like, people are a bit more chill. And, like, London, I down go down earth, there and I get... more I'll genuine. Get, yeah, I'll get roasted for my fashion sense and I'll just be like, <laughs> you know why? Because I was wearing shorts and a hoodie and they were just like, that's a weird yeah, combo. Right. Like, why would you wear shorts and a hoodie? Like, that's com conflicting. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> that's like very The thing common. with Manchester as well is like the fashion there. Like, you could literally wear absolutely anything and it's like, yeah, he's dressed for Manchester because yeah. there's no, there is no theme. The theme is go crazy. That's true. That's yeah. true. I'd agree yeah. with that. I'd, I'd, I'd live in Bristol that. before I'd live in London as well. I really like Bristol. I heard that Bristol was kind of like the new London. It's, yeah. Be great yeah, but probably there, like but a watered down version without all the bad points. Yeah. Yeah. It does have a lot. I think it's like the crackhead uh, capital of England, Bristol. I saw a yeah. lot of crackheads there. Oh, right. And yeah. I was one of them. Yeah, no. the rave. <laughs> no, 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 actually. <laughs> no comment. A couple... Uh, we, we have a question from Anthony the Pear who just says Elisiani. Yes. That was what he wrote. Just his own surname. <laughs> Grow up, Anthony. Yeah. But shout out. Great man. Go subscribe to the Pear on YouTube. I love you, Anthony. Yeah, great <laughs> fella. What a weird fucking thing. I think... I always think he like <laughs> fucked up. Like it was accidental. <laughs> <laughs> probably was bro probably just wrote was, his own surname. yeah he's probably had a big weekend um Lil yeah. Scarf my roommate says favourite but it's not a question even it's just no question mark but I'm gonna assume it's the question Californian ooh who who's mine um <laughs> I mean I'm trying to even think of the most attractive celebrity Oh, These are shit questions. No, yeah. yeah no, I, was, I was rattling off a few of the easy ones. Uh, Busher says, who is least likely allowed back into Britain? You've got a passport, so it's definitely going to be there. Yeah, 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 Jesse. Yeah. I'm going to do it as long as I want. Thomas Band says, West Coast winner flag before Frio. Talk, we could talk about this because... <laughs> True footy in that. 
Frio have lost so much experience in the last two years that it's almost set our rebuild back like a yeah. good couple years. Eh? Yeah, like we, we years. had like an outlier season where it was like Monday, we had Blake Akers. Uh, I don't know if Fife really played that year. I don't think he did. Mm. Uh, but Griff Logue, Rory Lobb. Uh, we've lost guys like Brad Hill, Lockie Neal. Um, so much experience. When now you look at our leadership group, it's like Hayden Young, Andrew Brayshaw, Caleb Sarong. It's like these guys have come out of like the draft in the last five years and now they're our leaders. So like, I don't know. We, we have so much potential, but I feel like you need that top end age. Uh, fuck knows where West Coast are at. I really don't take any interest. I just hope Harley Reid has a good season. Like, I'd love to see Harley Reid. Like, I'd, I'm so excited for the midfield battles in the derbies. Like, that's so sick. Like, Brayshaw, Sarong, Hayden Young, who's probably going to be running through there versus like Harley Reid, Elijah Hewitt, and Ruben Jimmy. Like, that genuinely excites me. Cheers, man. I appreciate it. Um, that kind of links into the Alex's question. Alex Lindqvist. I've definitely said that wrong. Sorry. Uh, will the two WA teams be 17th and 18th next season? No. No. I actually... I, I am a optimistic fan. I think neither of us will occupy either of those positions. Who finishes bottom? That's the much harder question to answer. Uh, you know what? Actually, we, uh, I didn't even answer the North part, but I, I would say I think... I actually think now I'm thinking about it. I've done a lot of analysis over this offseason. And I do think North is the most likely wooden spooner because of the experience they have on the list. They're 18th in both age and experience. And that is generally a very good predictor of where you're going to finish on the ladder. And we still have a lot of experience and a lot of it was injured last year. So it just makes more sense that who's going to win an extra game next year? Us. But then again, that's only a case for why we'd finish 17th. P- predicting Freer aren't helps. that bad as well. No, I don't think like- so either. Nah, Frio, Frio will be pushing top eight. I predict we finish like ninth or tenth. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Up, that's fair. Up, and I, w- I would say we're still like, we're going to be in the bottom four teams uh, regardless. Um, and that's, but that that doesn't mean like the following season won't be worse. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's still with more retirements yeah. to come, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, somebody asked, this one is going to be tough for you. Uh, Die Ivory, or yeah, says who is the most, who is the player that most likely to win the Rising Star from a uh, pick fifteen or above? And you're going to say Cooper Simpson. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah, I'll throw a couple out there. I'll, I'll say James Leak. I just think he's quite ready made as a running defender. Don't know if he gets a game, but I think somebody who could have like a Michael Anny quality year. But then again, like, is he going to outperform? your Reeds, McCurches, even Dozma and Walter, like those types, I, I wouldn't bet on it. Um, I also really like Charlie Edwards from Adelaide, so I'll, I'll shout out a couple of those guys. Um, and then... Cool for I, Simpson. <laughs> cool for Simpson. If you take... Uh, Mason Bates, he asks, if you take one aspect from another sport, e.g. from the NBA or the Premier League, uh, what would you take and why? Ooh. That's a good question. Um... I reckon maybe like a red card could be fair. Really? Like if, yeah, I reckon Maynard should have got red carded. That that whole uh, Brayshaw Maynard kerfuffle. Mm. I reckon like send him off, miss a week next week. Because like you look at that like back in the 2018 derby, I think it was where Gaff knocked out Brayshaw. There's no way that Gaff should stay on the field after that. Like you'd need off. a VAR scenario in that case. So it's, that's extra stuff you add in because nobody saw that because yeah, that's the thing true. like you'd have players getting red carded in games but Gaff would have gotten away with it because nobody saw it so you'd need a VAR and that would just get complicated but I, I get your I point like, I get your point I feel like me and Anthony did a video years back on his channel where we discussed like different rules and stuff I'm like sure that I, was I can't really that. remember I think I was there yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah what would you add what would you add from different uh, For me, it was more like list management stuff and I, I, I just think this is coming and this is a very vanilla answer but I think the ability to trade further into the future for future picks yeah i think that's coming though uh purely just because it, what it actually does is allow clubs to get more properly compensated for losing good players you know yeah. like before you could trade future picks you would just give up a player for the best picks the opposition had and you just had to cop it um, yeah so if, you know if chris judd hypothetically had requested a trade to um who finished for geelong hypothetically geelong would have just given us pick 16 <laughs> you know what I mean? and we yeah. just had to cop it yeah um, and a player probably but uh, so I just think that that's a mechanism that will make the league a little bit better but it would have to be regulated so teams don't just like destroy their future like West yeah. Coast um, 
I think that was the last question. I rattled them off. Um, okay. What, what are your th- plans for the new year? What, 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 let's. Do you want to set some goals? We we did this in. We did a Boxing Day podcast a few years ago. Yeah. Um, do you have any particular goals for this year? I know you're moving to Melbourne and stuff, but anything you've put more thought into than that? I want to like three times the profit of my business next year. Nice. That's yeah. Do you um, manifest? manifest what like what do you mean uh well the concept of manifesting is when you focus really really hard on your goals and there's a school of thought that it will just materialize and then there's other schools of thought that just think it will you'll be able to put that into fruition because you change i'm really oversimplifying it before do you ever think about that do you like picture your goals specifically or do you just write them down yeah 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 yeah. i picture them i write them down yeah i yeah I suppose I do manifest it, but it takes hard work. It doesn't just happen. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have systems in the, place and stuff. Yeah. I'm beginning to the manifest and um, affirmations gig right now. Uh, not because I believe that... Like, th- there's this whole school of thought called The Power of Attraction. And uh, there's a book called The Secret, I think it was called. Like, literally written decades ago. About how the, if you think about something hard enough, it will come into your life. And I don't, I don't believe that. But I do believe that if you focus really, really hard on what you want to achieve and put yourself in a certain direction, subconsciously, you start to actually make little micro decisions constantly that will lead to that goal. Big booty bitches, big booty yeah. bitches, big booty. <laughs> I've been manifesting that for years. <laughs> and this year it came to fruition. <laughs> oh, God, Factual. Bless. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, I want to th- like three times the profit of my business, which will make it like livable. And then I'll be yeah. like genuinely self-employed, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, maybe, well, I need to crack 10K. Like, come on. Yeah. I'm like 1500 away. Um, yeah. But like, then again, then I'm chasing like an outcome goal of social media, which is like not healthy. Uh, but yeah. It's related uh, yeah. to your business though. So it is fine. I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with those. 10K and, uh, yeah, it, two two would be a pass mark. 2X my profits. 3X yeah. is what I'm aiming for. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I, I have been manifesting 50K by this time next year. Um, but I obviously know that's ridiculous. But at the same time, if I manifest really hard in that direction, I might end up at like 33. And that would be my biggest yeah. year ever. Do you know what I mean? So... Yeah. That's what I'm focusing on. And then uh, the second part would also be like putting strategies in place. So th- the thing about subscribers is it is very, a, a very much a vanity metric. It doesn't actually lead to success. It doesn't mean more people watch your views. I have more subscribers than I've ever had, obviously. And yet I think I put out a 300 view video the other day. Like it doesn't, it doesn't mm. actually translate. But at the same time, you put yourself, you, you focus on goals that push you in the right direction and you will be better for it. So that yeah. was 50K. But I think in a more practical sense, I just want to get through this winter without getting a job or dipping more into savings. I want to start the year really well and I want to travel next year. So I want to earn more than I spend in between now and this time next year. I think that's actually a pretty yeah. practical thing. Like if I have more money now in 12 months than I do now and I've traveled and gone to America and come back to uh, Australia, that would have been an amazingly successful year. Yeah. We'll talk about this off camera, but I'm also going to America. We need to maybe try oh, yeah, plan nice. something. Nice, nice. I'm going to leave that yeah. in. Cool, man. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's been a fun Christmas podcast. I don't really know what I intended for this podcast. Like, I, I was kind of... Merry on, Christmas! Uh, Merry Christmas. Um, it was it was kind of modeled on True Geordie when he used to do those Christmas podcasts with all his mates, and it's kind of meant to be a fun experience. And then we just started talking about, like, self-improvement. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that on Christmas yeah. Day. So. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But, well, I, um, hope, I hope we kept someone company on Christmas Day, because I used to watch those podcasts when I was like, I don't yeah. know, I'd finish with my family and stuff, and be like, what do I do now? True majority. Yeah, that, but, uh, that was yeah. legitimately my thinking as well. And um, I, am, I am one of those people that has no one to spend... Well, sorry, that's a lie. But I, I'm going to have a very boring Christmas morning, because my mate will have worked all night so i'm gonna wake up and, and just go to work <laughs> at my desk um yeah so i'm one of those people so shout out to anyone who didn't have anyone to spend christmas day with i don't know if there's anyone like that watching but uh, i hope we made your day a little bit better and uh, a big thank you to everyone who watches um well true footy and also anyone who watches Druzy's channel well, as 20 many as they are <laughs> <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, actually, Druzy, you've uploaded vlogs and you've got a big back catalogue of people, uh, of videos about what you did this year and people who should go check that out. 
Yeah. Because it's finals it content. Like, yeah. I wonder what Drillsy fight about Auschwitz. You, you, yeah. <laughs> you can go watch me have the best time of my life if you don't want to watch it i don't care because those videos are just yeah for mm. memory's sake but um yeah. yeah hopefully i'll have some more content coming out soon Druzy's athlete academy oh i'm also doing 30 percent off for Druzy's athlete academy right now by, by the way so if uh you need a pre-season plan which guarantees results slash your 2k time right down Druzy's athlete academy go check it out cool man Druzy. thank you so much for spending uh pre-christmas day with me and i hope you have a great christmas and i sure i'm sure our paths will meet in a physical sense gay uh, next year and um yeah all the best mate thank you for indulging in the true footy podcast once again anytime mate merry christmas to you jesse i hope you have a, a nice day and yeah fucking what a year it's been man we've had a lot of fun this year Mm. compared to the year before we've had we've had a really good year so long may it continue many f- more fun days ahead yeah and the drinks are on me good night america good night america <laughs>